Hello guys, welcome to the Seven Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for more Seven Engineering updates. So today we are going to discuss uh, some of the very important points for the earthquake design, so that our structure can perform well for the earthquake. When earthquake comes, your structure may perform well if some of the points you remember and you apply in your practice field right so the first one point i want to clear uh, is the 135 is the at uh, this point that you should provide the 135 degree seismic hook seismic hook in your what in your transverse reinforcement means it may be stirrups it may be ties transverse reinforcement why this is very important because for example taking uh, taking an example of uh, a beam or maybe column i'm taking an example of column and these are the longitudinal bars in column uh, for them these are the longitudinal bars and i'm going to support these by the ties right these are the ties which i will i'm showing you in a front view these are the ties while in the cross section view i will see like that right if i'm seeing that the cross section will be like that so these are the for example longitudinal bars for longitudinal bars and i and i'm and i just hold these longitudinal bar by ties right so what should the tie be so the ties must be 135 degree right this is now 135 degree hook it should not be like that or like or we see mainly and there's a column, these are the, these are the longitudinal bars, and these are like this one. Like, it's move this one, and it's move this one. It should not be like that, it's 90 degree, like that, like this is the, and this we So it is now 90 degree hook, while this is, well, this is 135 degree hook. So we will use the 135 degree hook. It's also called seismic hook, and it should must be provided in the transverse reinforcement. In the transverse means it may be ties. Like for example, is a beam to a column. It's ties. While in beams we call it stirrups. So 135 degree hook should must be provided in the in the uh, transverse reinforcement because if we use the more degree uh, seismic hook it will provide more sufficient strength and it will be more in concrete as compared to the 90 degree hook like for example if load is coming on this and it will like this to and fro motion of earthquake load so this will be more easily be uh, pulled out from the structure as compared to this one because it's now bent in this whole structure while this is also bent in this one so this will be difficult that it will pull out during the earthquake that's why we are using the 135 degree seismic hook and the earthquake design right so this was the first point about it and it's really important to use this in practice second one uh, is the provide providing uh, to provide the enough encourage length right provide the adequate adequate encourage length encourage what does it mean it means that your encourage length means if for example taking an example of this beam and this is the column right this is the column and if you place the this is also the column and if you place the reinforcement of the beams so we actually what we do we actually extend this reinforcement and, and we pull uh, and we enter into the column reinforcement and similarly in the top there's a negative moment coming so we also do the same so this encourage length means uh, for example i'm just taking it here this the top reinforcement is coming down up to this col column depth so it means this encourage length should be enough should be enough for if the earthquake comes and it will literally displace so this will not pull out from the column right for example if the earthquake load is coming in the little direction like in this way so 
and during the earthquake it will move like this way so this column re this beam reinforcement should be enough anchorage and the column so it will not pull out during the later loads so this we call is the providing the sufficient anchorage length this is called anchorage similarly in the beam we also provide this and the top in the bottom reinforcement so this anchorage length should be sufficient that it should not be pulled out during the earthquake it, it's for the longitudinal bars of beams not for the or uh, not for the transverse reinforcements as we see in the first part first point so this was the second point of earthquake Uh, showing you or uh, drawing the third point is the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, separate joint, right? Building, building separate joint, building separate joint. It means if the uh, earthquake prone areas where the earthquake is mainly coming and the, uh, these areas so what we should do we should provide the building separate joint it means if for example this is your ground and this is your one building and this is your another building right so what we should do we should must provide the separation joint between these two buildings this is we call as a separate joint we represented by delta and we must provide is this 60 millimeter according to the standards right that this joint should must be provided in two buildings for example there's the one building first building and there's a second building so the distance between these two buildings must be 60 millimeter it should be separated because when the earthquake is coming again uh, this building will be collided if, if there was the distance so this building will move this way uh, and this way and it again at this way like this way but it will but if there is no distance between these two building like I'm drawing it here if there is no distance between these two building this is one building and this is another building right so what we'll do actually if this load is coming on this building so it will also displace this building as well so it will also damage this building as well this is why there is some distance we provide we call is this building separate joint and it should be must be, must be 60 millimeter provided is the minimum separate length according to the standards right so the fourth point is now i'm showing it the fourth point and it's very important of one of my uh, student asked this question in comments that uh, what is strong beam and we call them concept right so this is I'm going to discuss to a wide strong beam and we call them this is very important in earthquake engineering right it means that you should not provide the strong beam and weak column because it's a fixed joint for example this is a beam this is a column this is a column and then it's another floor it is a column this is a four column and there's another beam this is a, for example two street building maybe so there's a ground so what should we do the beam should not be strong as compared to the column or maybe multi-story building for example there's another floor there's the multi story building now so now the load of this beam load of this uh, beam is coming on this column right again this column load is coming on this column as well as this the load of this beam is coming on this column right similarly the load of this beam is also coming on this column and the load of this beam is also coming on this column right so this column is going to support the whole load of these columns as well as the load from this beam as well so it means a much loaded a much load is coming on this column as compared to uh, as compared to this beam as compared to this beam as compared to this beam because these are the individual loads that's coming only this floor load is coming on the beam only this floor load is coming on the beam only this floor load is coming on the beam while this column while this column has the load of these all beams 
is all structure load is coming at the last and we take is the column the whole load will now take by this column so if your column is weak if this column is weak and not going to support that load so what should we do what should be done this if this structure fails if this column fail it means your whole structure is going to collapse right but if your this beam fails then there is no problem only your one structure is failed right only one structure is failed only one floor is failed and if this beam is failed only one story is failed if this beam is failed only one story is failed but if your this beam column is failed then your whole structure is going to collapse that's why we always provide the strong column and weak beam it means that your column should not be weak right and your uh, the beam should not be strong but your column should be strong much and beam should also be strong but not that is compared to the column because column we deal always is a that the column is always a critical member uh, catastrophic behavior it shows the column uh, so you know, a very care should be taken when designing a column right well as compared to the beam beam is a total member and uh, we don't care too much about the beam while column is a critical member it is a compressor member so very much care should be taken uh, uh, when to design the column So uh, this was so this was all about the uh, concepts and important points for arc design uh, and uh, I will upload more videos uh, to different fields and if, and if you have any question please comment we will respond to you and uh, please subscribe don't forget to subscribe our channel and thank you for watching our video.